Hello and welcome to today's training video on an introduction of the new Matrice 300 RT Creative version 3 firmware. You can see the different firmware versions here. They are also listed in our release notes available on the product downloads page. You can update them following the method listed in the table or through an offline update method for most all components, which will be covered shortly here within our presentation. We'll review some different sections today, starting with data security and privacy. The first of these updates, as I just mentioned, is the ability to complete an offline update. So for those who do not want to connect the Pilot app to the internet, this allows you to download the firmware from our website, place it on an SD card, SD card into the remote control, and then going into the health management system, firmware, and then offline updates, can still update your aircraft, payloads, and smart controller, which includes the DJI pilot application update. The data and privacy section has been added, can navigate to it by clicking the three bars in the top right on the homepage of the pilot app, where you also see manual and mission flight and clicking on data and privacy. One of the options we've added here is the ability to clear DJI device logs if part of standard operating procedures. You have the option for remote controller, the H20 series gimbal, and the aircraft. Please do note that clearing device data may lead to failure to locate cause of an error or accident, and after sales rights may be affected. For the SD card encryption side of things, within that same data and privacy menu under the security code section, you can set a encryption for the H20 series. Thus, whenever trying to view data from the SD card, the security code is required. We have a DJI decryption tool, which can be downloaded on the Matrice 300 RTK downloads page, only supported on the Windows system, but this will then allow you to open the SD card on the computer by using the DJI decrypt tool after encryption. Network security modes have been added, which gives you a bit more granular control over options including map service, network RDK, and the FlySafe system. So if you do not want the Pilot app connecting to the internet for items such as a firmware update, by allowing these specific services, you can still complete your operations while keeping the Pilot app offline. Still have your other data modes, such as local data mode, which allows no network request to be sent in order to protect your data. Pilot enhancements. The first one here is the ability to use multiple pinpoints. So now on the home screen, when you tap and hold on the pin in the top left, when the H20 series gimbal is connected to the Matrice 300, you can select a specific pin color. You can also tap the text there that says check all pins to easily delete or edit any single pin. And then change the setting regarding pins being displayed in the image transmission feed by default. Going to the map, you can also click on any pin, have a specific pin selected, view the lat long, edit the lat long, or set the pin as a home point. So very convenient if you're doing any long linear missions or operating with multiple people on scene and switching aircraft control, being able to see and set a home point using the laser rangefinder of the H20 series is quite useful. You can also customize remote controller buttons for adding, deleting, or selecting your pinpoints. And currently the feature for setting uh, the pinpoint as a custom home point is only on manual flights. Made a big improvement to the ADS-B in capability of the aircraft. Previously, we heard feedback from users that they were getting warnings or notifications regarding aircraft in the area that weren't of any effect to their operations. So the logic for a warning has been approved. And we also now show on the map the distance away of any aircraft along with its altitude. So you can see there, still as the aircraft's getting closer, you can see the yellow and aircrafts that are farther away being blue. There's also an AR projection of the aircraft on the 
camera feed, as you can see there on the right side, along with still showing the distance and height. The warning will be red. The closer the aircraft is, you just have blue and yellow here on the screenshots. Within the application, we now have better information on our maintenance program. So you can see flight data, such as total flight time, total flights, total distance. You can also purchase and request maintenance service directly in the app. Three maintenance service, basic, standard, and premium. You can see more information on our website or directly within the application. The system will automatically recommend a maintenance plan for the drone according to the selected flight time. On the right side of that menu, you can see DJI Care Enterprise. So you can have a clear understanding of the policy for both the basic and plus plan. You can also complete operations such as purchasing, binding the plan, or any mail and repairs or questions needed there. Added the ability for better troubleshooting with the battery case, can connect the remote controller to the battery case and look at any notifications within the health management system. Can also easily download and export any logs from the battery station for sharing with the after sales team as well. Language settings within the Pilot app have been expanded with support for French, Russian, Korean, and Turkish. And just to note, this is different from the smart controller language settings, which would be edited in the smart controller settings. You can, however, set your pilot language settings to be the system default. Now, if you pull the volume all the way to 0%, you'll see this notification in regards to remote controller beeping when the remote controller volume is all the way down. Those Notifications for low battery warnings will be silenced when the volume is down to 0% based on feedback from our users. Just take note, if you're turning that all the way down, those critical messages for a low battery warning will not be heard. So key to monitor on-screen prompts. In addition to the previously supported live streaming methods, RTSP has been added. You can get to that by clicking the three dots in the top right the three dots in the sub menu and going into live stream settings. Optimize the interface for OSDK and PSDK, where you can now operate these payloads and see key information and shortcut buttons with the transmission of the FPV camera. So don't have to operate it with a black screen. Also added support for custom buttons, so OSDK and PSDK developers can integrate that in with their payloads. And additionally, we have added the ability for the Mature 300 RTK to take off in authorization zones without any internet connection required or custom unlock. So you can see on the map on the left there, go to our DJI FlySafe site and look at the FlySafe map, any blue zones are authorization zones. And previously those were unlockable either live in the field by connecting the RC to the internet or ahead of the fact by doing a custom unlock through our website. Now in the field, you can fly in these blue authorization zones offline, just complete that within the application. No internet connection required. The red restricted zones, which you could see there on the left side still do require a custom unlock through our FlySafe portal or the black gray authorization zone, um, altitude zones. If you were to fly above the altitude of those, you would also need a custom unlock for those. But the blue authorization zones can now fly in uh, similar to the you know, warning zones that you may have seen before as well offline in app. Moving into flight optimization. First off, we have revamped the pre-flight checklist here, concentrated to one page, brighter color, easier to see, and added some key components that we wanna make sure are checked before flight. For mission flight, this is also integrated, but note you have your pre-flight check of the aircraft and then flight route for your mission flight. 
route check also adds remaining capacity of the SD card, the route length, estimated time, estimated waypoints, and the estimated number of photos there. So key information before running a mapping or a waypoint mission. The warning within the app for a weak signal will prompt whether it is remote controller or aircraft that the interference is occurring with. So you can make adjustments based on that warning and being a bit more specific there. Let's see, as we play these couple of videos here, uh, turning is easier to operate if you're looking at the camera view as you're operating the drone. Previously, there was a side slip in manual flight, but now coordinated turn allows the drone to turn without that slide slip and the nose is in the same direction as flight. On the RTK side, you can now turn on RTK in the air instead of having to turn it on before takeoff. So if you're in a congested environment on the ground, putting that drone into the air can lead to a quicker RTK connection. And also now the option which you may have seen previously with the P4 RTK for RTK to maintain positioning accuracy mode for up to 10 minutes. Do note that the accuracy will continue to decrease with time. So useful here if you have an intermittent lapse of an RTK connection or internet, if you're working on custom network RTK, that can be very useful for the mission there. So there's no pause or loss of RTK fix with your data. The altitude limit has been increased from 500 meters to 1500 meters, useful for increased altitude of surveying and mapping missions or inspections in mountainous areas. This function does only take effect outside of 50 kilometers of the airport and do note local regulations before taking flight here. This altitude increase is obviously meant to be used within regulations, so be careful when operating. Some other updates to note here. When returning home, there has been a warning adding, warning added if there is any obstacles that are encountered. So you know to manually control the aircraft or return to home after that automatic mode has been exited. If the drone is flying back to home and the pitch rod is pulled backwards, the return to home will be exited and the aircraft will stop. Have optimized selection strategy of the transmission band to improve anti-interference performance. The pause button can no longer be used to resume in mission flight. And then if you're running a waypoint flight and set the aircraft yaw to along the route, it will no longer respond to yaw stick movements. If you would like it to respond to yaw stick movement, would suggest setting your waypoint flight aircraft yaw to manual, but there has been the adjustment made if you have put it to along the route. And moving into payload enhancements now. See a lot of folks use the panorama feature on our public safety side of the house. So we've now added that capability to the M300 and H20 series using the wide angle camera. It's a good tool to get a quick overview of a disaster site. Not a disaster site here in the video, but it gives you a good idea of the capability of that 3D panorama. The L1 IMU calibration has been changed from a figure eight to acceleration deceleration. So you can see that now on the top left and a quick video here on the right side. Do note as the aircraft is going to be going forwards and backwards, good to enable obstacle sensing and make sure the area is clear of any obstacles. And as it's doing that, you can see the progress in the top left, along with an option to stop it as well. The IMU calibration has transferred over to the mapping and oblique side as well. 
So after enabling IMU calibration in your mission planning, it will automatically add the yellow lines at the start, end, turns, and the middle if the route is longer than the speed times 100 seconds. If a single route is too long, multiple calibrations will be added. So this takes a lot of the thought or pausing or manual work that was needed before with a mapping mission and automates it. And you can see here on the right side, an example of the acceleration to acceleration being performed. Reaches the line and we go forward and back. On the waypoint side to calibrate uh, the waypoint flight, you can just go into your menu once again, need to toggle IMU calibration on. And then for the first waypoint, add the action, start point cloud modeling recording. And then if the flight time reaches 100 seconds, it will be calibrated on the subsequent waypoint, as you can see here on the right side. Same idea, where we're able to accelerate and decelerate. If there's a height difference between the two waypoints, it will be calibrated at an oblique angle. Some other payload updates with the P1, the offset of the camera has been changed to better match the actual situation, thus improving the vertical accuracy. RTK tagging for DNG photos has been added. For those who'd like a bit more granular control over the photos themselves for post-processing, but still need the RTK tagging. Also a bug with the auto white balance before, Within the camera view, you can now change the auto white balance to what's ever necessary for the mission, and that will stay for your mission flight. Finally, a few bug fixes to note here. Before we received feedback, there's an obstacle. There was a reason folks were drawing their mission flight to avoid that obstacle before the aircraft would continuously fly through there to complete it in the fastest time possible. But however, with the V3 firmware, we've improved that now where you can see the area drawn is where the aircraft will stay within. And also with the margin side of things, when the margin is now set to zero, the aircraft will once again stay within that margin. Before we had an issue where the zero margin and it was still leaking slightly outside the lines drew it. But now with that update, aircraft will stay within those lines and avoid recessed areas. A few other bug fixes with high-res grid photo, if the gimbal's pitch angle was exceeding 50 degrees, we're seeing some issues with that before. So that's one big bug fix there. If you were updating the batteries and the battery power was not full, the update speed was slower. So that's been improved. And then finally, fix an issue where some of the HDMI external devices plugged into the smart controller enterprise were not displaying full screen properly. So that concludes things covering the V3 firmware update for the Matrice 300 RTK. Thank you for tuning in.